The oceans of the world are huge, and the oceans of the world are deep, and that combination means that there's all kinds of things hidden inside of them, and some of them are very odd. These are 20 bizarre things found underwater nobody can explain. Number 20. Douglas DC-3 Dakota this World War II aeroplane may have met an unfortunate end back in its flying days, but its resting place beneath the sea has given this Douglas DC-3 a renewed purpose, even if it does look a lot like littering. This plane of the Second World War was actually sunk in the waters off the coast of Turkey in 2009, and it was put there on purpose, all in order to create something for divers to go and investigate. It cuts a suitably spooky shape under the water, and there's something distinctly sinister about a plane that's wound up underwater all covered in algae and sea debris. Even though we know that the plane didn't meet an untimely end there, it still gives you the willies as it looms out of the darkness in the poor visibility of the depths. However, this is the kind of thing that divers seem to really be into, so really, who am I to judge? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. The Musa Underwater Museum is a curious thing, but also kind of incredible. A collection of over 500 statues, and they're all underwater. The museum would be the idea of Jaime Gonzalez Cano, who began putting it together in 2008. Many fantastic and talented sculptors have contributed to the work of the museum. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag Sweet Topic. Number 19. Manganese Balls this is kind of a bizarre thing to find on the seafloor. Even the marine scientists that stumbled across this one found it a bit unusual. Apparently finding manganese nodules in the ocean is not in and of itself all that unusual. These metal lumps are formed by layer upon layer of metal ore crystallizing around a core like a rock or a fossil. They do come across these from time to time. But these particular ones were so very perfectly round that it made the German scientists who found them stop and scratch their heads. They really cannot account for how they became so very neatly circular, saying that they usually look more like a messy cow patty. But these metal nodules may have been forming over 10 million years, which means that they hold inside of them secrets to how the climate has changed throughout that long history. Number 18. The Underwater River this extraordinary and unique place has such an ethereal beauty about it, and it just doesn't make sense. How can there be an underwater river? Just the notion of it is a head-scratcher, but the place does indeed exist, and it is stunning, if even a little tricky to access. Located in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, the secret underwater river known as Cenote Angelita has been found about 15 minutes drive south of Tulum. The way this thing works is apparently a sciency thing involving a thin layer of hydrogen sulfate that separates the salt water from the fresh water. This is how the river maintains its own flow and form and gives the whole scene a spooky, surreal feeling. This particular river also has proper riverbanks with trees and plants growing alongside, so it really appears like a river that has somehow been submerged beneath the ocean. Number 17. The Yonaguni Monument it's kind of surprising just how many cities of history have fallen foul of the unpredictable waterline and have found themselves submerged in the rising waters of the sea. It seems as though every country has one, and this is Japan's. There is a submerged ancient city in the waters just off Yonaguni Yima in Japan, and it's believed that this city was submerged about 2,000 years ago when an earthquake struck the area and then sunk the city. A marine geologist named Masaki Kimura has been methodically measuring and documenting the ancient remains for over 15 years and has been deepening his understanding of the site. He now believes that the city is actually 5,000 years old, containing numerous structures which are, as he believes, proof of the civilization that once lived there. But apparently not everyone in the marine archaeology community is inclined to believe that this was the case. Some have even put forward theories that this is an entirely natural 
structural structure and has no evidence that humans built it whatsoever. So there are two rather opposing views and a whole boatload of controversy, and that's what makes it a more juicy Lost City story anyways, isn't it? What do you think? Is it a city or a naturally formed phenomenon? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 16. The Sea of Galilee Oddity Ah, excellent. One of those mysterious anomalies. I'm beginning to grow fond of these things, aren't you? Let's just hope this one doesn't turn out to be another big old heap of rocks. In 2003, a sonar survey of the southwest part of the Sea of Galilee, the largest freshwater lake in Israel, revealed some unusually large boulders which appeared to be arranged as a kind of monument beneath the water. Each boulder is estimated to weigh around 60,000 thousand tons and is around 33 feet tall. The whole arrangement stretches to a diameter of about 230 feet. It is strange, but scientists have concluded that it is man-made since it doesn't resemble any kind of natural structure. They also concede that the stone monument must have been the work of a well-organized society, but that's really all they're able to conclude. The mystery deepens. What do you think? Is it aliens, perchance? Go on, have a hypothesis in the old comments section. You know it'll be fun. Number 15. Underwater Crop Circles What is this now? More aliens? Surely not. Well, UFO botherers around the world are particularly fond of placing crop circles in the category of alien creations, and good for them. But what if those crop circles, or things that look a bit like them anyways, are occurring beneath the ocean? Well, it looks extremely spooky, and given the fact that we know virtually nothing about what is actually going on in most of the world's oceans, it's no small wonder that some people looked at these patterns and simply figured that it was the work of aliens. Well, I'm sorry to poop on that party, but these patterns are the product of puffer fish. Try saying that without your teeth in. These underwater patterns were discovered by a photographer who was completely mystified by the shapes, which he dubbed mystery circles, despite having spent 50 years exploring the depths of the ocean and having never seen anything like this before. And so he decided to do some further investigations, this time with a proper camera crew, and what they would discover was completely amazing. These circular patterns were not not, sorry about this for all of you believers, the work of aliens, but rather the result of tireless toil of one very small fish. The small male Japanese puffer fish had apparently been spending his days making circular ridges all over the ocean floor by using only his flapping fin. This was no accidental work of art though. The little fish would deliberately gather shells, bring them to the pattern, and then break them, scattering the fragments along the inner circle ridge. These artworks were created with the usual intentions of most male creatures in order to attract the ladies and entice them to mate with them and lay their eggs in the center. The circle shape was to draw the attention of the female fish. Apparently, the more intricate the pattern, the more popular the male fish proved to be with the ladies. So there you go. It simply takes a bit of circular action to get the ladies going. Number 14. World War II Treasure It's not every day that the rumors of sunken treasure turn out to be true, but every once in a while there comes along a legend and a treasure hunt that ends in a massive pile of gold bars being discovered at the bottom of the sea. The HMS Edinburgh was a British ship that set sail during April of 1942, but that was then attacked by a German U-boat in the Barents Sea. The thing was, though, that this ship wasn't just carrying all the regular war-shaped stuff. It also also had on board a stack of 465 gold bars. This was to be payment from the USSR to the United States for the war equipment, but it never arrived at its destination. The British would deliberately scuttle the stricken vessel to prevent the Germans from getting their hands on the gold. And we all know how much those Nazis just love stealing all the gold. So the HMS Edinburgh lay undetected 800 feet below the surface for decades until 1981 when a team of salvagers located the wreck and the whole lot of the treasure as well. They would work constantly for a month, 
all that gold being a great motivator as it was, using all of the technology available in the early 80s, and the diving team did manage to retrieve 431 of the gold bars, all while doing a delicate dance around the unexploded bombs and other wartime paraphernalia that remained inside of the wreck. According to the post-war rules, the gold was then divvied up, with the then-Soviet Union receiving two-thirds and the UK the rest. Number 13. The Baltic Anomaly Uh-oh, something circular and mysterious. It must be aliens. Always with the aliens and the circular oddities. Really, though, why is it that when anything circular or indeed symmetrical turns up unexpectedly, do we all instantly assume that it's aliens? Why would aliens be so into round things anyways? That is at least a big mystery as anything else we've been wondering uh, so far. The so-called Baltic Sea Anomaly, there's a catchy name if I've ever heard one, is a geographical feature that's only actually visible on some fairly indistinct sonar images that would be taken by a Swedish diving team back in 2011. They were out there in the northern Baltic Sea doing some treasure hunting, and when they reviewed the images, they concluded that what they had seen down there was an unusual object that they thought might have a non-natural origin. The tabloids, never shy of potential aliens headlines, had a field day with intense speculation about it being a sunken UFO. But of course, there's no way that it might be what scientists have said, a boring old geological formation, or as well, a big round rock. What do you think's going on here? Is it a clue to extraterrestrial life, or is it something much more pedestrian? Go on and get stuck in the comments below. My pet guinea pig Twinkle dares you. Number 12. Tire Graveyard People have certainly done a whole lot of dopey things in the past, sometimes without much thought for what the future repercussions might be, but sometimes they have done some super dopey things with the best of intentions, but apparently without engaging their brains at all. This insane mess of ecological catastrophe is one such thing. Back in 1972, a bunch of bright sparks had a harebrained scheme that they believed would solve a growing environmental issue. They decided to build an artificial reef in the waters off of Fort Lauderdale in Florida, removing the issue of growing piles of tires in landfill sites, and they thought that putting them to good use as a reef was a good thing. Well, their intentions were good at least, even if their minds were clearly completely addled by whatever they were smoking back in the 70s. They lashed together a couple million old tires with metal clips and then simply dumped them into the Atlantic Ocean, as one does. However, this may be a massive surprise to you, or maybe not, it turns out to be a completely terrible idea. The metal clips would corrode in the seawater, there's a big surprise, and it released the tires to travel in the water and cause damage to the nearby coral reef. So basically, they created an underwater wasteland that is not only an intensely revolting eyesore, but it's also an environmental catastrophe that's doing exactly what they had planned to prevent in the first place. How genius. Number 11. Loch Ness Monster the legend of the Loch Ness Monster, or Nessie, as she is affectionately known, has captured the imaginations of people for generations. The photographs that surfaced in the 1930s that have since been debunked and proven as fakes have given thousands of monster hunters the hope that Nessie has been hiding out in the chilly waters of Scotland's Loch Ness. Various ideas have been attached to Nessie. She could be a leftover from the dinosaurs, somehow surviving the event that wiped out the rest of her species. Perhaps, though, she was a massive eel, or maybe even an ancient Greenland shark that had found herself in the wrong waters. Oh my god! There are as many theories as there are enthusiasts, so wherever there are myths, there are party-pooping people trying to dispel those stories. And back in 2019, some researchers from New Zealand decided to focus their investigations on the waters of Loch Ness. By extracting DNA from samples of the water from the loch, the scientists determined what kinds of creatures are living there. Their conclusions, they say, 
have shown that there is no evidence that a prehistoric creature like a plesiosaur lives there, nor a really big old Greenland shark or catfish. What they did find, though, was lots and lots of eel DNA, and they say that this most likely means that there's a sizable population of European eels in the loch. But they say the DNA doesn't say what kind or size that these eels might be. In fact, they can't rule out giant eels. So the mystery of Nessie lives on, and she might be re eel after all. Number 10. The Infamous Black Smokers the spooky sight of black smoke blasting from beneath the depths of the ocean could give you an inkling of being rather too close to a hell mouth. The smoke spewing from the furnaces of the underworld. Or maybe it's something a little less dramatic. Who can say? Some marine biologists have done some investigations and have figured out what may cause these spooky smokes. They were first discovered in 1977 by Robert Ballard. Yes, the same guy that finally found the Titanic. He discovered the first black smoker on the seafloor close to the Galapagos Islands at a depth of around 6,500 feet. They're found near areas of volcanic activity in places where the tectonic plates are moving apart. There are both white smokers and black smokers, the colors depending upon the types of chemicals that are emitted by the particular hydrothermal vent. Although these phenomena spew out some fairly toxic stuff, they're also surprisingly adept at supporting a whole array of marine life. In fact, there's a school of thought in the scientific community that believes that all life on Earth may have originated from hydrothermal vents. There are believed to be similar things on the moon of Jupiter beneath its icy cover. So what does it all mean? Oh, yes, you guessed it. Aliens. It's always aliens. Number 9. Statue of Jesus now, there's nothing quite like a 10-foot-tall statue of Jesus gazing up at you from the ocean floor to get your spiritual stuff flowing, which is exactly what most divers are looking for, after all. There are a bunch of Jesuses scattered around the seabed in many locations across the globe. He's a popular guy, you know. This particular Jesus statue can be found in the Mediterranean waters off the coast of Malta, which is located in the same area as a scuttled ferry and cargo ship named Imperial Eagle that wrecked on the spot in 1999. It's now become a destination for diving enthusiasts and those who enjoy a spot of underwater Jesus statue fun. And who doesn't like that, I ask you? The weird thing about this statue is that it isn't its first underwater location. And this guy, well, he didn't get up and move himself to a more exclusive piece of real estate. No, the statue was simply relocated. Now, I never much thought about the reason that these sorts of things end up at the bottom of the sea, but it does strike me as being kind of weird that people actually put them there on purpose. It isn't exactly the same as finding sunken treasure or the lost ruins of some kingdom. This is all about aesthetics. But there you go, this Jesus was moved from his original underwater spot near St. Paul's Island and then plopped into the water near the wreck to make a more picturesque diving spot. That's what Jesus statues are for, after all. Number 8. A Mysterious Beast from the Depths, Indonesia when a creature dies in water and is left to float about a bit, all kinds of gross things can happen to their body. Some of those things can make it kind of difficult to identify what the animal might have been when it was previously alive. Now, I know this is kind of upsetting, but this is why there are so many of these mysterious alien creature stories. Sorry to be a big old party pooper, but it's time that we all faced some facts. So when this apparently mysterious hairy blob washed ashore in Indonesia, it only took a few random snaps on someone's phone and a quick upload to the old social media before a bunch of bright sparks took it upon themselves to poke their own decidedly unqualified oars in and give the mess a good stir. Some of the extremely quick-witted suggestions included the speculation that the unfortunate 20-foot-long creature was an old English sheepdog. 
really? 20 feet? Or a poor dead sea cow? Somewhat boringly, the local authorities then stepped in to clear up the conundrum, and presumably the rotting 2,000 kilo carcass as well, and released a statement that said that it was actually a dead whale. Yes, it turns out that when a whale is decomposing in water, its flesh can turn white and begin collapsing in such a way as to appear kind of hairy. I just hope nobody was eating their tea. Number 7. Hedonistic Roman Symbols So, this place may have felt the cleansing waters of time washing away all the filthy sins of its past, but the Roman city of Baiae was one of the most notoriously hedonistic places in all of the Roman Empire and played host to the debauched whims of the wealthy elite for centuries. It still bears some evidence of its time as a party city, but has been hidden from view beneath the waves since the 1500s. Baiae was uniquely positioned on natural volcanic vents, which created the healing hot springs that the city was famous for. It was huge popular during Roman times, but declined in the years after the height of the empire and was eventually sacked in the 8th century by a Muslim army. It would then be abandoned by 1500 and the waters began to rise. Those same volcanic vents that had made the city so fun were now reclaiming it for the sea. The ancient remains of this remarkable city sit under the shallow waters of the bay and can be visited in glass-bottomed boat tours through the ancient streets. It's also a favorite spot for snorkeling, diving, and swimming and gives a beautiful view into this moment of the ancient past. Number 6. Underwater Steam Engine it seems as though the present-day blight of chucking all our trash into the world's great seas and oceans may not be a new phenomenon, whereas nowadays we're mostly concerned with the piles of plastic that we're liberally scattering into the water. Back in the day, people were gleefully lobbing their old stem trains into any old body of water they happened to be passing. Well, it probably wasn't exactly like that, but you just have to wonder how all these things got to be so freely scattered across the globe and in so many exciting and original locations as well. I suspect it has something to do with the British Empire, but who wants to have that discussion? Seriously, does anyone want to have that discussion? Go ahead and get it all out in the comments below. Go on, it's good for you. This particular underwater steam train was found in the Red Sea of all places. That is, in fact, the seawater inlet of the Indian Ocean that's nestled between the continents of Africa and Asia. It borders Egypt, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen, amongst others, and seems like a mighty strange place for someone to put a steam train. But there you go, it gives the fish something to swim around, I suppose. Number 5. Atlet Yam Ruins Oh goody, another underwater Neolithic place with an alleged stone circle. Mmm, my favorite. This time we're in Israel, in the waters of the eastern Mediterranean Sea just off the coast of Atlet. The ancient submerged village of Atlet Yam is believed to be between 8900 and 8300 years old, spreading across a whole 10 acres of submarine real estate. This is a site of huge archaeological significance, as it's believed to provide some evidence of the earliest known agro-pastoral substance living systems on the coast there. There have been plenty of useful discoveries which have given given archaeologists a lot to work with. They've discovered houses, a water well, human skeletons, and animal bones, as well as a stone semicircle that's made up of seven megaliths, each weighing around 1,300 pounds. Archaeological studies of the site at Atlet Yam and its contents have suggested that the whole place was abandoned in a hurry and was likely inundated with water as the sea levels rose at the end of the Ice Age. There's some evidence that an eruption from Mount Etna on Sicily during that same time period may have caused a massive tsunami that would have inflicted huge damage on the coastal settlements of the Mediterranean, so it is a bit mysterious in that we don't know a colossal amount about humanity so very long ago, but equally, there's a bunch of evidence available for experts to piece together some exciting sounding stories to satisfy at least a little of our curiosity. Number 4. A 4,000-year-old shipwreck 
One of the oldest shipwrecks to ever be discovered was found in a gulf off the coast of Turkey. The area of the port of Erla, which dates back from around the 7th century BC, has been well explored, but the latest find was pretty remarkable, even for this rich archaeological site. The amazing ancient wreck was stuffed full of extraordinary artifacts which promised to give up some of the secrets of humankind from as far back in time as 4,000 years ago. The shipwreck was believed to have originated in the civilization which existed from around 3650 until 1400 BC, and archaeologists who have worked on the sunken vessel believe that the ship had been used for trading purposes and had contained evidence of this history within its bounds. In the same area, the excavations had also uncovered a treasure trove of architectural remains, which included various sunken harbors and over 400 anchors, many of which date from the same ancient civilization, but also include some which date from as early as the Bronze Age right through the Ottoman Empire. This area of the Mediterranean has proffered incredible lost treasure to help historians better understand an especially mysterious time in human history. Number 3. Ancient Egypt's Greatest Lost City Back in the year 2000, divers made an astonishing discovery in the waters of Abu Kur Bay off the coast of Egypt in the Mediterranean Sea. It would be the lost city of Heraklion, also known as Thonis, which had laid underwater and undisturbed for more than 2,000 years. This legendary lost city has its origins as far back as the 12th century BC, which is an incredibly long time, and it's really, really old, having many links to the other great civilizations of the era, ancient Greece. Archaeologists believe that the city was lost to the sea as a result of a combination of earthquakes and tsunamis, as well as the issue that we share in the modern world being rising sea levels. The great buildings of Heracleon were likely taken by the waters when the city experienced a great flood at around the end of the 2nd century BC. Many structures would have collapsed under the pressure of the water and huge areas of the city were lost. It's believed that some residents may have stayed in the few remaining parts of the city during the Roman era and the early days of Arab rule, but it continued to disintegrate and was completely taken by the Mediterranean at the end of the 8th century AD. The remains of this once great city are currently located about one and a half miles off the coast, but as we experience our own rising waters, just how far out they'll end up is anybody's guess. Perhaps it's time to start building that boat. Number 2. Wreckage of World War II Aircraft Carrier Found in the South Pacific Ocean the USS Hornet was an aircraft carrier that saw active duty during the Second World War, and it played a pivotal role in the Battle of Midway and many other significant events. Oddly enough though, considering the size of such vessels, the precise location of the wreck of the Hornet had remained a mystery until 2019, more than 75 years after the ship sank to the bottom of the ocean. Using a combination of data research by looking deep into the naval archives and accounts of the events, a team of researchers were able to pinpoint an area that they believed the Hornet may have been located. They then traveled out to the site and did the final part of the search in the research vessel Petrel. Their examination of the site has returned photographs of the wreckage, along with weapons and such, still intact all these years after it was sunk by Japanese forces at the Battle of Santa Cruz Island. Number 1. Spanish Gold Coins Worth Millions Found Off Florida Coast Being a treasure hunter is a genuinely bona fide job, although most of the time it's fraught with disappointment and is a generally underwhelming retrieval operation. Rather than a movie-esque adventure through caverns lined with glittering golden artifacts, but perhaps the thing that drives these treasure hunters onwards is the hope of a life-changing haul of loot glinting on the ocean floor. This team of treasure hunters from Florida were diving off of Florida's east coast when they came across the gold glittering in shallow waters near Vero Beach. 
They were searching here as they'd previously been lucky with a hall that was close by, and they never expected to find this gleaming cache of rare 18th century coins. Somewhat spookily, the treasure can be traced back to the wrecking of a fleet of ships that was voyaging through a treacherous hurricane on the exact same day 300 years prior. Coins found in the hoard included some extremely rare pieces known as Royal Eight Escudos. It was these in particular that made this find so very valuable indeed. The discovery of 350 coins came to an astonishing total value of $4.5 million. What a splendidly weird paddle through the ponds and puddles of our damp planet. Which of these oddities tickled your fancy? Or have you seen something even stranger beneath the surface? As always, let me know all about your fishy encounters in the comments below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.